Welcome to this short introduction of Advanced Financial Management or AFM in your ACCA studies. And my name is Steve Chen and I'm the course director at APC. I'm also a fellow member of ACCA. In this video, first of all, I'll be covering the syllabus of AFM and then I will take you through of what the computer-based exam environments looks like and also I'm going to show you some tips of how you can pass this paper easily. So as you can see from the ACCA, the syllabus has been divided into the part A, B, C, D and E. So let's first of all look at part A. It's the role of senior financial advisor in the multinational organisation. It's where we're going to be focusing on the stuff in the financial management or the previous F9 of your studies. So things will be covered like the international organisations, for example, the, um, the World Bank, the IMF, and some of the uh, macro economy parts will be covered in a part A. And then we'll be moving on to the part B, is where we're going to be dealing with what treasury function normally does. So, in the part B, is the investment appraisal, is where we're going to spend our money in buying the non current asset, for example, the land properties, and so on and so forth. But you notice the word here, it's called advanced, which means not only you have to be familiar with the stuff in the financial management of your studies, for example, the traditional MPB and IRR calculations, but in this paper, you also need to know about some of the advanced techniques. So, for example, the modified internal rate of return, the adjusted present value, and so on and so forth. And this will be covered in much more detail in our course. And I can't say which part is more important. Because in every exam sitting, you will see a traditional net present value calculation question comes up. So either in the investment appraisal or you can value a business, we need to use the traditional MPV techniques. But sometimes a big question may come up, for example, the adjusted present value, or a small requirement in other parts of the paper, for example, the MIRR, the Modified Internal Rate of Return, um, this will be covered, or this may come up as well. So we'll be covering these in much more detail later in our course. Part C is the acquisition and mergers. So just to differentiate acquisition and merger, acquisition means I buy you, and then I assist, and you assist. But merger means I buy you, either both of us does, do not exist, or you do not exist. So that's called acquisition and mergers. But nowadays, we tend to mix them all together. So for example, it's the M&A, merge and acquisition. And here we'll be looking at different strategies of how we're going to defend hostile bid. At the same time, we'll be recapping the techniques that we've studied in financial management. So, for example, we could use the market-based approach to value business, or we can use the cash flows based to value business, cash flows based approach. Alternatively, we could use the asset-based approach to value business. And of course, in your FM of your studies, these would be examined, but in the AFM paper, the examiner will be more interested in one area than another. So, for example, unlike in your previous F9 or financial management studies, that the examiner is particularly interested in asking you to calculate the market capitalization of a business. But in the AFM, the examiner may simply require you to use the dividend valuation model or perhaps the free cash flows based approach to value a business. So 
What we have to do is to practice a lot of exam standard questions with our own techniques so we can be more familiar with different types of requirements or questions that may come up. And part dot then, we'll be covering the corporate restructuring and reorganizations to improve the business operations. And finally, is the treasury and advanced risk management techniques. And of course, in our part A, from a technical point of view, it's quite tough, it's quite difficult. But from the exam's point of view, it's not that tough at all. Because as you can analyse the past examination questions set by the examiner in the AFM, you will see a very consistent style of questions that may come up each and every sitting, focusing on either foreign exchange rate risk or the interest rate risk. But unlike from what you've studied in your financial management or FM of your uh, uh, studies before, the examiner tended to focus on the forward market hedge or money market hedge calculations in the uh, FM study, but in the AFM, the examiner tends to more focus on the currency futures, interest rate futures, or perhaps the swaps questions, mixing with investment appraisal questions. So as we see, our teaching style is a little bit different from what we study in the FM. In the AFM level, I'll be teaching you the key topics and the syllabus knowledge in simple examples to make sure so you understand the terminologies and the basis behind each part in the syllabus. And then I'll be quickly going through quite a lot of past examination questions and to make sure that all parts of the syllabus will be mixed together and make sure that you are ready for this examination style. And this is more important from my perspective. So, regarding the exam itself, as you can see, you have to get at least 50 out of 100 to pass this paper. And this exam is 195 minutes. Um, so we'll be using a deadline approach to plan uh, the, the paper okay, later on in our course. This course will be divided into section A. It's a 50 marker question, it's the case study, it's the large question in other words. Uh, in the section B there will be two 25 marks question, which means total will be 100. All three questions in the AFM are compulsory, which means you have to do it. The exam will be run in a computer-based environment. Either section A or section B, um, any topics may come up okay, as a small requirement. For example, the Islamic finance may pop up as a small requirement, mostly in the section B uh, of the exam. So I'm going to take you through of what the uh, exam environment may look like. As you can see, uh, when you click on the left hand side exhibit and these are known as attachment okay so the examiner sends you an email or the finance director sends you an email and so on and so forth and you need to analyze the situation uh, or analyze the case in much more detail so for example in this case we are given the company background and the proposals and other information as well and then We'll be clicking on the requirements worth of 50 marks. It will be split into multiple requirements. And then you're going to respond to those requirements in the word processor or the spreadsheet for any calculations. Remember, in the question one, I'll make sure that I'm going to show your calculations in your spreadsheet, not the word processor. Clearly referring to the workings. Okay, in the Excel spreadsheet, because in the word processor, you are showing your report, you're showing your words, okay, rather than uh, complicated numbers, because all the complicated numbers, you can do it in a Excel spreadsheet, for example. 
Another tip I would like to give you is when you click on the requirements worth of 50 marks, splitting into different requirements, the first step that you have to do is to copy those requirements into your word processor. Okay? And then you're going to start planning your answer based on the words. For example, evaluation, appraisal, recommend. Show each of these headings using words from the requirement. So you will not miss any requirements in any question. And this is a very important exam technique that you have to master. And of course, when you are reading the case, you can highlight the case. Please do use your favorite color to highlight different information. And this is quite important as well. At the same time, if I were you, when I highlight the key information, especially for numbers in the question one in the AFM paper, I like to mark it down onto my paper as well. I make sure that I know exactly what I'm going to do with the numbers. So this is an exam technique that we have to master. So as you can see, when you click on the requirements, there will be different requirements in the question one. So simply copy and paste them onto your word processor. And also you can see there will be four professional marks only in the section A. And that's why you have to lay out your reports in a clear manner. Just to help the mark a little bit further, to mark your script so you may get a higher mark as a result of it. So clearly laying out all the requirements, this is for part A, this is for part B, C, D, D is number one and then number two. At the same time, please do use the correct format, for example, it's the part doc, requiring you to use the memorandum. So you have to study the format so you can apply them uh, correctly in your answer and you can easily score perhaps two out of four professional marks in each and every exam setting. Right, the next thing is about the tips uh, I can give you. Is how we're going to pass the AFM paper. I usually tell my students the key to pass the AFM is not about calculations at all. You will see the paper has been consistently divided into 50% related to calculation and 50% related to comment. If you're very good at calculations, that's absolutely fine. Perhaps you can score 30 or 35 or 40 out of 50. I haven't seen any students who have scored 50 out of 50 in the calculations. I've been teaching the AFM paper for quite a few years. I've marked many and many of the mock exams from my students. I can see most of them, the calculations, will be around about 20 to 40 marks. And be realistic. Make sure they're ready for this. So, if the calculation has been 50, and if you score 30 or more, the written part is again 50, and then if you can score 35 or more, that's where you can get 65 marks in total. So, the key to pass the AFM, from my perspective, is all about comment. And make sure that in the AFM paper, for each point, you're going to cheat each point as one mark. So, with regards to comment, if the examiner requires you to discuss or perhaps evaluate something, for example, giving you five marks, if I were you, I would write approximately four to five sentences for that. And I know there will be uh, different lecturers 
or different tuition providers may not disagree with the, uh, may not agree with this, but according to my experience, the key to pass the AFM, I've been helping many students passing their AFM paper recently. Uh, one of them has scored uh, the highest in Slovak uh, in March 2017. Um, using this approach. So focusing on comment is the key. So how about for the calculations then? From my perspective, you cannot really control the marks that you can get from your calculations. And that's why just try your best. Because we are not sure uh, the mark allocation for each and every exam setting regarding the calculations itself published until it is published by the ACCA. But if you can see the comments part, for example, for example, discussion of efficient markets, etc., etc., there will be two marks there. So if I were you, I would like to write two sentences explaining my point regarding the efficient market hypothesis and so on. Quite important. If you can see the professional marks as well, one mark for the structure or the format and three marks, it really depends on which marker marks your script. So showing your answer clearly, making sure that you apply the right techniques regarding the comment part, showing the right format, you can easily score two out of four. I haven't seen students scoring four professional marks out of four. So trying to be realistic is the key to AFM exam success. Okay, so that's the introduction to the AFM. I hope you're happy. In the next section onwards or in the next video, we'll be going through the syllabus with our own exam technique. I'll be showing you quite a lot of exam standard questions, applications during the course. So see you then. Bye. APC accounting for your future